Hello class, Aldo Figueroa here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to set your uh, ready for posing character file to be ready for animation. So what I want to do, uh, I want to go ahead and open up my file. I'm going to go open, open scene. And my project directory is already set previously. So I'm going to go right here. I have this uh, ready for posing. I want to use this file. So if you have your resi ready for posing file already set up, uh, let me go ahead and open this. And let me show you what we have in this file here. What I have is my character that I created using Autodesk Character Generator. I brought the character into Maya. And I went ahead and set this character with a human IK rig. And so you can see the characters here. Uh, other things that I also did that I'm going to do a little bit of setup as well is that I already created an Arnold light, the Sky Dome. So we have this in the background. And then I have the floor plane. Uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to temporarily hide the Arnold Sky Dome by I, I'm selecting the Sky Dome. And you can see over here my outliner. I'm just going to press Control H. That temporarily hides the light. I'm going to bring it back at render time, but I don't need the light right now. And, and as you're moving around, if I go underneath the, the, the floor plane, I'll get this. So I could also, if I want to temporarily, just hide the disk, which is my floor plane. So I just have my, uh, my character by itself. So I'm going to do that. And what I want to do uh, to set this up is that we're going to create what is called a character set. A character set allows us to be able, whenever we start working with animation, so we could see our different keyframes for all of our different attributes that we have right here, for all of our other things that we're going to be keyframing, that they are, will be displayed in the uh, timeline. Right now, uh, for example, let me just show you a quick example. I'm going to just create a polygon primitive. Uh, we'll create a cube. And I'm going to go ahead and select it. I'm going to duplicate it so we have two of them. And right now, if I select one, and let me go ahead and just change my timeline to frame one at one here. And if I go ahead and have this one selected in my channel box, I'm just going to press uh, the keyboard shortcut to animate. I'm going to press S. So I've, and I've put a keyframe for all of these different variables here. I'm just going to move up ahead and just press S right here. What happens is that with this object selected, I could see the keyframes that are represented by these ticks, these red marks. But when I switch to a different object, those keyframes are no longer there. So with a character set, we're able to select multiple objects. In this case, it's going to be the different controls for our character and put them all under one node. I'm just going to go ahead and delete these two objects because I don't need them. To do this, uh, within my outliner, again, if you don't, do not have your outliner open, you go to Windows and go to Outliner. And I just put my outliner within my interface here. I'm going to select the character control reference. So this selects all of the different nodes. This is, no, I'm sorry, not all the nodes, but all the controls. This is the parent. If I click on the little plus I, a little plus box next to it. You can see that I have all the different effectors for my character. So this is the parent. I'm going to select it. And in the animation menu set, I'm going to go to key and I'm going to go to under character set, create character set option box. I'm going to click on the little option box. And right here, I already gave this name earlier. So it might say by default just character and then a number sign, number one, two, three, depending on how many characters you have. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and I'll call this, because my character is called Happy, uh, I'm going to call it Happy, but I'll go ahead and add the additional text uh, character set. Make sure that you turn on, include hierarchy below the selected node. The selected node right now is just a character control reference. If you don't have this turned on, you're not going to have all the controls, which defeats the purpose of having the, the character uh, set. Uh, under attribute, what I want to do, I want to, you could tell it to include all keyable 
only from channel box where you could select the ones you want. But in this case, I want to tell it all keyable except, meaning do not include these. I'm not going to use these to keyframe. Uh, I'm going to leave the scale and visibility selected, meaning that do not add the scale and visibility. I want the translate and the rotate. And in some cases, if you're working with dynamics, leave the dynamic turned on. I'm going to go ahead and create, uh, select the create character set button. And now what we have, I'm going to go out in my outliner. I'm going to minimize the character reference right here. We have a new node at the very bottom. It's a little icon, a little person. And this creates a character set. If you notice now over here in my channel box, uh, you could go ahead and just click on the channel box over here. We can see all of the different uh, effectors have been added to this character set. So when I start to animate, it's going to show all of the different things that I've animated. So a, a couple other things that I want to do to do some setup on this file. We're not done, done just yet. I also want to point out that down here within our timeline, now we have our character set. I have my happy character set. If you have multiple characters, you can switch between them or you can tell it to do none. But I want to go ahead and make sure that happy character set is selected for my character. But also I want to point out that when you bring in uh, for, especially for my students or whoever used auto, uh, Autodesk Character Generator, when you bring in that file, I would go into the animation menu, uh, anim animation preferences, excuse me, by clicking on this little icon right here on the bottom right hand corner. It's going to open up the preferences and the frame rate is set to 30 frames per second. Since we're working with animation, I'm going to sw switch it back to 24 frames per second. Or you could select whatever frame per second that you want to work with. If you want to work with either 24, 30, even 60, or even greater as well. But I do want to just select 24 frames per second. But notice that one of the things that I, I need to change, if you look right here, right underneath the playback rate, it shifted that value because it used to be at, at 30. I'm going to go ahead and tell this the, the playback to start at frame one and end at frame, since uh, I don't need lots of frames for this one because we're going to be doing a walk cycle. So I could just tell it, uh, let's see, I'll tell it, I'll go ahead and tell it 30 for right now. Now the animation start and end, I'm also gonna do one and 30 for right now. We can always add more frames as necessary. So now we can see down here that I'm at frame one and it ends at frame 30, and I'm displaying frame one to 30. We could always change that if we need to later on. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to save. And at this point, now we have our character. We have our character set. I could temporarily bring back my disc. I'm gonna select it and press shift H. And also my sky dome, I'm gonna select it and press shift H. And we have our character that is now ready. I'm gonna go ahead and save this out. I'm gonna to go to file, this time I'm gonna tell it save scene as. And for this file, I'm going to name it. This is no longer ready for posing. This is ready for animation. So this file, I'm going to reference this character, this file, this specific file is now ready for animation since I created my character set. And I changed some of the different options, changed my frame rate from 20, from 30 to 24. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to save. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to save, continue again. And now this file is ready. Now, if I want to start working with this file or start animating it, I'll just go to file. I'm gonna to go to save scene as, and in here, I'm just gonna go ahead and say, instead of ready for animation, maybe this is going to be my animation 01 or what have you. I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to save, continue. And this file now, this new file, that's animation 01, I can now use my different controls to start animating. In our next video, I'm gonna show you how to use the human IK to start animating this file. So, I'll see you in that next video. All right, bye.